It does not spread. Well, you know, you're doing something right then. That's right. And we don't believe in, we believe in quarantine. I'm going to use that word. That's a trigger word for a lot of people. We use the, we, we believe in quarantine. If you're sick, you get quarantined to your bedroom and we will bring you stuff. My poor nephew's got scarlet fever. Oh my gosh. Like two weeks ago. That's, that's I was so like, bad. oh my goodness. Isn't it like a certain strain of strep that does that? Yes. Am I am I crazy? No, I believe you are absolutely correct. It's like it's like a strain How of How awful it. is that? That's pretty bad. Cuz you know that's not like a very common illness these days. Like back in no, the day. No, and they didn't got get it. like they didn't get like the sore throat and all that before. They just kind of started getting this red rash. Oh. And my sister took them to urgent care and ended up being that. Oh my gosh. Yeah, um they each get their own bottle of Lysol. That's how this works. <laughs> Cuz <'Cause laughs> it's so catching. It's so catching. Uh so yeah, I did some research, you know, cuz that's what we do here. Google helped me out. And uh Cleveland Clinic has a how to keep your kids healthy when they go to daycare article. And do you want to know when it was released? Last month. COVID last oh. month. Okay, so it is up to date. It is up to date. You know, I love dates. Fresh and articles research. That are fresh. Yes. So they say the most common daycare diseases are colds and upper respiratory infections, pink eye, strep, stomach flu, and hand, foot, and mouth, which is all the things we have covered today. Those are all the illnesses we have experienced. Well, they're, they're common. Yep. They, they also noted that kids in daycare are more sick than their stay-at-home peers until the age of three. So if you have a kid that goes to daycare and you have a friend who keeps their kid at home, the kid at home is going to be less ill than the daycare peer, right, of the same age group. And that just makes sense, right? Because it's like herd health. The bigger the herd, the, the more likely disease is going to spread, right? Absolutely. So, but they say after three, it balances out. So... Uh, and I think it's because probably at three, your kid's more mobile and they're doing more on their own. So they're in the grocery store and they're touching shit. Right? Like, <laughs> they're going, I want this. And they, they grab it and you're like, put that back on the shelf. And they put it back and then somebody I else I call comes mine an octopus. You're a little octopus? I call mine an octopus because he literally touches everything and he has multiple arms that I can't see. Like, it's just like, ah, <laughs> all the time. So I'm like, stop, you little octopus. <laughs> That's fantastic. Um... So, but they did say... It's a little stressful. Because <laughs> you're like, stop that. Quit putting that in the basket. Uh, they say that the sicknesses spike again in kindergarten. Um, because, you know, at three, you're leveling out. But they said at five, the kids that were not in daycare are going to be the ones that get more sick than their day peers that went to daycare. Because the peers that went to daycare have built up an immune system. So the chances of them getting ill from the same stuff, very rare. So that's kind of cool. Makes sense. That's kind of cool. Um, I think it's cool because of research. It has nothing to do with your kid getting sick. That's that's not what I mean. Something I for I us to look it. forward to. <laughs> I know, right? Here we go again. Um, they say to help strengthen your child's immune system by focusing on hand washing and staying up to date on vaccines, other healthy practices, eating nutritious foods, getting enough sleep, playing outdoors, and drinking water. I think those are all very important things that you can do as a parent more easily, right? Food. Absolutely. Sleep, and if they stay hydrated, them. it is so important for their immune system. Mm-hmm. Yep. They and said, even if they do catch something, it helps them, it helps support them during the sickness phase because they're already hydrated when they're losing fluids. Yes. And so keeping them hydrated is the easiest way to do it. So the daycare... Um, offers cold water to the kids. Like it's like from the fridge cold and they drink more right. water when it is cold versus at room temperature. And that's how they keep huh. the kid that was hydrated is because they like the taste of the cold water better. And so they're going to drink more of it. And so well, that's neat. That's why they keep all their water in the fridge. It's not for any purpose other than the kids will drink it because it's cold. So that's awesome. That's kind of cool. I didn't know that. I yeah, I didn't know that. They were telling me about this the other day, you know. And uh, But I, I mean, was like, when they serve cool. you drinks at a restaurant, they they tend to be cold. 
Yes, and it's to make so you I drink more. I guess people more. prefer it. Yeah, it's to make you drink more. That way you get full faster. <laughs> And then you or drink to, more wine. Or you, or you drink more <laughs> wine, though I get pretty full. So you buy wine. more wine. <laughs> uh, that's also probably true. That's probably true. Uh, so the most common daycare illnesses, according uh, to the to Google. So if you type in uh, daycare illnesses into the Google search bar, it literally pulls up like this. I don't know. It's like a chart. It's probably the best way to describe. It's a chart. And it's a chart of the most common daycare illnesses. So your top, I don't know, five, nine, something like that. Here we go. Is I'm going to try to pronounce it with the correct scientific name. All right. And if you can tell me the uh, common name, that would be great. You ready? Okay. Here we go. Gastroenteritis. Gastroenteritis, you mean? Yeah, that one. What's that one? It's, so, I don't think there is a common name for that. It's just a uh, stomach bug, is what they say. Yeah. But gastroenteritis just means Usually that there's inflammation within the stomach intestines. and the uh, intestines. It cause diarrhea. So, that's fun. It's kind of a general term. Yeah. Most of the time, the flora in your gut is wrong, and your flora needs to to be happy again. See, I knew Rosie would know all this stuff. That's why they have the yogurts with the... the <laughs> I don't know about all this stuff. Yeah. Yes, yes, Usually absolutely. Usually that's what you get prescribed but you can't, during that time. But you don't take that when you're taking antibiotics or you're just killing everything that you purchased to fix it. Correct. Yeah, don't... So you yeah. have to finish your antibiotics before you do probiotics. Yes. Anyway, sorry. No, I... Continue. It's completely correct. That's what I've always been told by the doctors. Conjunctivitis. I know I pronounced that Oh, right. that's just pink eye. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I know Pink I eye. pronounced that one right. We get that one a lot. Uh, uh, it's usually uh, fecal matter is what causes pink eyes. Isn't that fun? Poop. And keeping your kids' nails trimmed is very important with pink eye spreading Poop. because it gets underneath the fingernails when they're wiping their face and wiping their tears away. And then they run up to another kid and scratch them and or just touch them. And the uh, little bug, because it's typically bacteria, the little bug gets on their skin and then they wipe their face or whatever and back and forth it goes. And so one of the number one things is hand hygiene and keeping their nails short. Yep, I agree. Uh, streptococcus. Streptococcus? Yep. I don't know what that one is. Strep. It sounds like a bacteria. Strep. Okay. Strep. Um, and this is a fun game. Influenza. Oh, the flu. <laughs> How about croup? So, uh, I don't know what they call it generally. What's what's the common name for croup? Cough. Like Severe cough? Severe cough. Just a cough? Severe. Severe. I guess. And this is bad. really common with baby babies to be super ill with it. Mm-hmm. Older kids can get it, but... It's really severe in baby babies, and they can get um, secondary infections. Yeah. So just know that daycares carry all of these and more. Um, It's not to scare you. It's simply to inform you of what, you know, this is part of it. If you're going to be a working parent and your kid's going to go to school, these are the things that you will deal with. You're going to deal with these things whether your kid goes to school or not, because if you take your kid anywhere, they can catch this stuff. It's not localized to daycares only. No. <laughs> so, um, that's going to wrap up today's episode. Stay no. healthy. Yeah, stay healthy. We hope you enjoyed this wine and motherhood adventure. Thank you for tuning in and turning up with us. Be sure to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram at Mom's Guide to Wine. That is the number two. Leave us a love note, episode suggestion, or just say hi. Howdy! This is Eliza. And this is Rosie. And we'll be spilling with you soon. Soon.